We're going to get started. All right, welcome. Uh, I'm Rafael Rizari. I'm the chair of the data science department here at Dana-Farber. And I'm going to be the moderator for this session. Before I introduce Hang, I'm going to pitch a postdoc postdoctoral fellows program we have at the Farber now for data science. We, we just got some gifts that permit us to pay a little more. We're trying to make it even higher, but currently it's 75K. And it's, it's going to be a postdoctoral fellows program where people can apply to, eat, to work with one of the PIs in our department. Hong's one of them. I'm one of them. There's others here. And we have statisticians, computational biologists, machine learning experts, and software engineers too. So the idea is to make it more flexible for people applying so they can either work with one PI, two PIs, or collaborate with some of the great scientists that work here at Farber or in the Longwood Medical Area in general. We have a lot of um, interesting science here, including some of what you saw yesterday. Um, Jeff, for example, is, is looking for people to, in our department to help him. Um, so that's the idea. So hopefully you, you learn, those of you who are graduate students are interested, keep an eye out for um, announcements. We're going to probably make one towards the beginning of the semester in Twitter or, or on our website. If you want to find us, is Google Data Science DFCI and you'll find us. All right. So today, um, it's my pleasure to introduce Hong Lee. He is a computational biologist, perhaps one of the most influential in the world right now. He, I doubt anybody here has not used his software at some level, indirectly or directly. He's developed very used tools like BWA, SAM tools, a bunch more. I won't list them all. But recently, he's been, he's been interested in, in taking those ideas of, of mapping reads to um, so you, to, to assembling it to the entire genome, to more, more than one person, uh, and including, the, like it says in his title, telomere to telomere, that's what he's going to talk about today. So hopefully we'll, we'll, this talk will lead to conversations that can maybe uh, bring together the tools he develops and the tools we develop in Bioconductor. So thanks for agreeing to talk, Hong. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation. And it is my great pleasure to um, give a talk here about uh, this. This is actually a more like a review talk. It's, uh, I mean, what's the, it's reviewing what's the progress mostly in the past uh, couple of years about the, the genome assembly. And uh, first, let me just, uh, just uh, give a little primer on, I mean, the shotgun thing. probably all know, I mean, you have the black box, this is the, the genome, and then uh, because the genome, the current sequence technology cannot sequence the whole genome in one go, because it's just too long, too, 250 megabits for the human chromosome one. And so they share the genome into pieces, and you got these reads, and then you order the, 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 these reads, and for them, the, the, the same type, uh, the same battle reads, and you order them, and you can see the, the relationship between them, and then you can assemble back to the, the genome. This is the kind of the, the I mean, the, the point of the assembly. And, uh, and people often use a jigsaw puzzle as an analogy to the genome assembly. And it's actually quite accurate uh, analogy. And so the assembly is a reconstruction of the genome. And here in the picture, uh, the, the, the whole picture basically is the genome. And if jigsaw piece, piece, this is a read. And the goal is to use the jigsaw piece and to, to observe the difference. I mean, the, the, the same pattern between the jigsaw pieces to recon reconstruct the, the genome. And uh, um, of course, I mean, in practice, it's my, my, my harder. It's not just uh, the, the, that that's just uh, 16 pieces. In practice, we have uh, similar patterns. These are representing uh, repeats in the genome. And then there are not just 16 pieces, there are 5 to 50 million pieces that each of them randomly is read. And uh, with short reads, it's yes, even harder. You, you may have a billion reads. To, to, to reconstruct the genome. And uh, there are also missing pieces because I'm um, due to the, the sequencing coverage and some, some part of the genome are not covered by, by, by these pieces. So you have missing pieces and most pieces are damaged because due to the sequencing error, these are not exactly, I mean, the correct pieces. I mean, it's better the, the link, I mean, maybe uh, 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 damaged by, by sequencing errors. And that's actually not the, I mean, most difficult part. The most difficult part is uh, this is, uh, uh, you don't know the, not, not the picture. 
Now do the picture, just a part of see the picture on the box, and so you have to reconstruct the picture. It's really a sort of the mapping problem. It's not the assembly problem. And uh, during the assembly problem, if you don't see the whole picture, and you just uh, given a power of five, you know, five million pieces, and re reconstruct the genome. And this is uh, what the uh, assembly, what assembler trying to do. And uh, I will move, move next to the, uh, uh, actually it's very tight. Uh, no, I just want to see this can control the time. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> like that. Uh, okay. Uh, I will move down to the 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 assembly of problems, and uh, but, I mean in the especially in in, in all this when we talk about the assembly book uh, algorithms, I also in text, but when we we may see these uh, popular notions. I mean, assembly the algorithm roughly uh, uh, can be classified into two uh, algorithms. One is the overlap graph, and is one the other is the domain graph. And overlap graph is the hybrid look for hybrid paths, and it's empty hard and so. And then there's uh, this uh, domain pass is a uh, look for Euler pass is linear time. This uh, in all textbook we often talk about this way, but actually in practice no assembler you you using this algorithm. This is just uh, as I said no no notions. What actually uh, uh, we are what we are actually doing with the assemblers is for all that graph. I will come to in the following slides. It, it's called the trend reduction. It's a it's a, doesn't look for the Hamilton pass. And for domain graph, and um, they these days for short read people still use this. Um, I mean typical domain graph. But for long reads these days people rarely use the I mean the the domain graph in the textbook. They are what they are using is called multiplex uh, domain graph. They use multiple cameras to control the, the, the graph. And the, the, I will not cover this topic here. This actually is more challenging, more difficult to explain than the overall graph. Uh, and then uh, the overall graph, the, this, uh, I will go through the, this, uh, this uh, overall graph, the, these algorithms. And um, uh, first, the assembly with this overall graph. And so in this three figure, I mean, each one short sequence is a rate. And so we have a bunch of reads and we want to reconstruct the, the, the genome, that, that, that's cool. And the first step, overlap graph, I need to find overlap. And uh, uh, you can see if here, uh, for them, this, uh, uh, we add a arrow be between the two reads, if the tail of one read overlap with the head of another, of another, another read. And in, in this case, you can see this, uh, uh, let me see that a little more here. Uh, this, uh, uh, G, 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 and here is another overlap. And so you, you have this overlap graph, and then we reorganize a little bit, and still the same topology, just a different uh, visualization. I mean, still the same same thing, you, you get this. And the next, uh, the, the next, next step, I mean, what uh, people, in the old type of people may talk about this harmony in the past, it's actually, it works in, in the same simple case. For the harmony pass, uh, the, the definition is like this. The harmony pass is a path that visits every ver ver vertex exactly once. And so if you find, try to find a path, there's only there's a single path in, in, in this graph. And so you, you go through that, you will re re reconstruct the gen genome. Uh, but the problem with the, uh, the harmony pass, as I said, this is a, uh, uh, it's NP hat. I mean, in other terminologies, uh, if there's n reads, it will take two to the nth time to, to construct it. And so, if uh, if n equals a billion, this will be uh, it's, uh, it's huge, extremely huge than that number, and basically not can't be, be, be dealt with uh, on computer. But uh, so, in practice, we are not using this. Actually, no practical example using this. So, um, to the um, to my knowledge, and so what they are you using is like this. What we are actually doing is um, this called the transfer reduction. And uh, look, look at uh, this, this figure. That's a uh, look at just a uh, green, blue, and brown. This uh, this, this three reduction rates. And uh, uh, we we have an overlap between them, between them. And uh, at the bottom, you can see this this three rate here. The key observation here is that you can infer the right overlap from the, the two black or, or that be between the, the three rays. The reason is that uh, you have this, uh, uh, because you, you know the overlap lines, you know the overlap is, uh, sequence. And so basically, if when you have this overlap, this the top pair overlap and the second blue and brown overlap, you can know there must be a overlap between the, the green and the, the brown one. And the, to some extent, this information, the, the red overlap is re, uh, redundant. 
And uh, because the sub, it, actually, if you I can show other example, it's actually not totally redundant, but mostly it's redundant. Uh, so we can re remove this uh, uh, this uh, thread edge. And similarly, the other three, uh, the other two thread uh, edges here, this is uh, uh, this is our alternative edge. Basically, they can infer from other world apps. And because they can infer, and so one way to deal with that, I mean, we can re remove it. And so when we remove, remove the transfer edge, the graph becomes simpler. And you can see this, uh, the, the, the rays at the bottom, I mean, be below this blue path, they can actually there's a single path, I mean, connecting through them. And so we can, I mean, can we become more them? And so the, the graph is completely this. This is uh, the uh, typical OLAB, uh, some of the practical some of the uh, graph, or some of how to do this. Basically, this uh, graph becomes just a, uh, there are only three nodes in, in, in this graph, and the, there's still one ambiguity because uh, it's, uh, you don't know where to, to choose. And there are some, the, there are other heuristics can come in. For them, you can choose the longest overlap. For the between, the, 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 on the, the read on the left, there are two overlaps. One is longer, one is a six base pair overlap, and the other is a four base pair overlap. You choose the longer overlap, but the longer overlap tends to be uh, more, more, more correct than, than the shorter one. And if you choose long, longer one, then you will resolve this. And also, by the graph is simpler, you can apply the Hamilton class in the local graph, not, uh, not across the whole, whole graph. And either way, you can, you can reconstruct this, this, uh, this, this, this ensemble genome from this graph. Uh, this, this is the, uh, basically, this, this is uh, what's the current uh, OLAB assembly, uh, how, how do we do it? Most of the OLAB work graph uh, is, is doing this. And, uh, and so, with the, the, this, um, this is the, the basic problem. And in practice, I mean, people, uh, these days, people are moving to the longer, longer rates. Uh, in, in old days, we use 100 base pair rates to do the, 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 the zombie. And these days, we are mostly using the, the long rates. Long rate by long rate uh, is uh, about, uh, say, 10 kilobits or a lot longer. And so this, uh, this, uh, this figure from the, the review current and the uh, Philippi, uh, Sergey and Philippi, uh, the data shows the uh, the effect of the the, the rate length. And so on the left, this is uh, assuming you are, you use fifty base pair rates to assemble this bacterial genome, not not the human genome. And you can see with the fifty base pair rates, you can you get a very complex graph, and you can't really find the counties through it. And with a hundred with a uh, a thousand base pair rates, the, the graph in the middle shows the uh, assembly graph. Uh, of, of uh, uh, these uh, southern base pair rates. And in, in this, you can still, still count really fine the circular genome out of that, but it's a, a, a cleaner. And each node represents a longer sequences in, in this uh, graph. And then on the right hand side, this is a circular genome. Basically, if you get a, a, a semi southern base pair rates, you can really resolve the whole, whole genome. And the uh, current uh, and Philippi call this the, uh, the golden threshold. Basically, if you have the rate longer than seven, seven, uh, seven, uh, seven thousand base pairs, then it's uh, likely to uh, to them. You can you can resolve a lot of bacterial genome into a, a single cell circle. And so this uh, the the key concept here is a uh, genome is resolved resolve if the rates are long enough to to bridge out of to bridge out repeat by bridge I mean they are landing on the unique region both end of the the rate are landing on the unique region then you can really resolve the repeat. And this is a uh, 2015. And that time, uh, uh, at that time, uh, the rates are actually very not noisy. At that time, I think the, the error rate is, is around 50, uh, 15 per percent error rate. And uh, what happens in the last couple of years is actually the, the, uh, the, the read accuracy has uh, be, be become much, much better. I will have a slide later to show what's the, 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 the data we are currently using. But uh, I want to mention here is that the accuracy is equally important is as important as the, the rate length. And the reason it is, it is, as I said, in the previous slide, I said that if the rate is long enough to bridge the, the repetitive region, it will land in both and landing on the unique region, then you can resolve it. But the problem with that, in the human genome, the centromere is like 10 megabits long. The, the, the centromere of the chromosome one and chromosome nine, they are 20 megabits long. And so you can't have a rate to bridge the, the entire centromere to and landing on the, the unique region. And there are also smaller signal duplications. The signal, signal duplication can be one megabit long. It's very difficult to find the rates that can bridge the, 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 the entire region. Basically, in this case, the rate lines that I mean they, they, they don't work. But 
when the deadlines uh, uh, that doesn't work, the, the, the read accuracy then may, may, may come to solve the problem. And so here uh, I show a, a example. Uh, in this figure, the purple and blue part these are your unique regions. And there are uh, two copies of the, 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 the red regions in the middle. But with the time, there will be new mutations. I mean, once they duplicate, after they, they duplicate, and after, say, one million years, there, each copy will accumulate mutation on them. And so the, the two copies are not exactly the, the, the same. They are very similar, but they are not the, the, the same. And so here, uh, the, the thin lines, the thin color bars, they show the, the, the rates, and they show the, 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 the similar rates. If you ignore the difference between the the, the, the two, two copies, ignore the, the mutation, you will get a Zamni bar something like this. You can just, uh, I mean, take the over. The reason that uh, you have, uh, say, overlap between one and four, because uh, one and four, both of are, them are, are red parts, two high red parts. And so they, if you ignore the, the, the uh, mutations, I mean, they, there will be an overlap between them. And you will create, create a contact overlap bar like this, and you can't really resolve it. And, uh, uh, but if you consider the, the, the if you, you can consider the, the mutations between the two, two, two copies, you can easily every the, the assembly graph on the right is much cleaner. It's just one, two, three, four, five. And when you see this graph, I mean, you can just uh, assemble through it, just uh, get one context through it. This is why the uh, the uh, the error rate matters. When you want to resolve the repeats, you have to um, uh, basically re re require exact a uh, whole life between the rates. Now we require that uh, the things actually might get simpler, now not become com more com complex. And this is what has happened in the last couple of years. And this uh, has uh, made, made, made the uh, uh, assembly much better. And uh, so this um, this noisy and accurate uh, uh, long, long rate uh, assemblers, the noisy rate rate assemblers, just a, a little, little uh, 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 the reiterate restriction of what I previously said, the not reiterate assembler, uh, they, they, when they're cracking error, they will smear the, the read coming from different repeater copies. And when they look for overlap, they allow overlap between repeats, like, like, like this one. They will, this is not the read that they typically do, do, do the thing on the left. And uh, for the accurate read assembler, this is what's developed in the, since uh, two, uh, 2020. And uh, these, these assemblers, they are face aware and repeat aware. They are do, doing this type of error question and they will, they will not allow uh, these uh, re re repeat overlaps. And with that, you, you can re resolve the, the re re repeat on, you know, on the left figure. And in, in practice, uh, uh, this figure shows the, the, the type of the error rate when we well apply the, the assemblers to, to assemble the human genome. This is the 13 genome because we, we know the 13 has already been finished, the telomere to telomere assembly, and so we know the ground truth. And uh, here we are comparing the, uh, the, 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 the assembly to the, the 13. On the y axis, the y axis shows the type of error rate. And so here is the, the percent multi copy genes in the SAM13 data missing in, in, in the assembly. And so here uh, it's uh, like, uh, suppose there's a, uh, there's a gene has two copies in the SAM13. And, uh, and then you check whether this gene has, still has two or more copies in, in the assembly. If it only has one copy, then you say that it is missing one copy or zero copy. Zero copy means uh, there's a gap. You are not assembled. And then this is a error. And uh, in this graph, uh, you can see this, uh, for the algorithm divide before 2020, and they, they have very high error rate. And so the highest bar like 70%, this means that 70% of the multi-copy genes are missing in the, in the uh, assembly. And, uh, but we with more recent assembler like HackSM, Hack and New, and also a few others, RJA and Workle, with them the error rate is much lower. It's near, near, near to zero error rate. And in contrast, uh, in contrast to others, the 70% are higher rate. This is what we, we, we can achieve now. I mean, this uh, in comparison to uh, a few years, years ago. Can you clarify what is the, what is the gold standard here? I, I missed that. The gold standard is the T2T, then telomere to telomere. This is a public, the, 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 the assembly published in, in science. And that one? It's finished. What algorithm is that? Like, uh, this is basically, they, they, they are using algorithm similar. This uh, is derived from, from high high canoe. This is more like a, uh, a improved world, world version of high canoe. And also it you use more, more data, data. And also they have, they have more coverage. They have, uh, the coverage is the same. That they, they have other data types, the ultra long rate and also your short rates. And also there's a lot of uh, manual curation involved right. in that process. I see, this is 100% the algorithm. Yeah. 
they have not done order, no, no curation, just put the, 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 the and only one type of data, high five rates in, in, into the thumbnail, and you, you, you get this. And, uh, <clears throat> and so uh, another point is that human is, is a, hum, humans are diploid. They have diploid genome base. One come from mother, one come from father. And uh, here, and, and, and be previous, I was more talking about assume the human has actual hyper genome and they just have one copy. In fact, we have two copies. In some way, the two copies are similar. Just similar total repeats. You can just imagine the whole genome are, 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 are uh, duplicated. They are like that repeat. They are done now exactly repeat because there are kilozygotes between the, the, two, the two copies. And so here, this um, again, this uh, the, the figure shows the, the, this uh, this is really a, a repeat. But if you, if, if you look at the two mi, mi, middle section, I mean, the, this uh, duplicated regions, these are actually like the two copies of the, the human the, the human two haplotypes. And so if you can. Basically, the repeat resolution and phasing, they are the same thing. If you can do the phasing well, you can re resolve the repeat well. And conversely, if you can uh, do the phasing well, you can, re you can separate the repeat well. They did the, 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 the same thing. And similarly, uh, this the phasing can rarely be achieved before 2020. When we do the assembly before 2020, we all get uh, this called collapse gene genome, because we get two. We will smear the, the two, I mean, the, the, the maternal and paternal genome randomly and switching between them and get, get the mixed genome. And uh, these, these days, these are our routine to do phase assembly. When we get the assembly today, mostly by default, it's a phase assembly. And the phase assembly also uh, is also the accurate, the, the quality of the phase assembly also determined by, by the, the, this. Uh, uh, the 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 rate accuracy, and so here you see the figure and it shows the paternal habitat and maternal habitat in blue and the red red color, and the thin bar shows the uh uh the the the, the, the rates, and so when we do the when we do the the overlap, I mean using the overlap graph, and if we allow uh mismatches between the, the two be, between the the, the rates, because we allow in exact matches, we will get a summary graph like, like, like this. And uh, the, 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 the dash line, this shows the, uh, the transitive address that maybe you can remove. After you, you remove the transitive edge, you will get the, the assembly graph, a linear assembly graph. But this assembly graph will collapse. And when we build a county, you will just get one county out of the two copies, out of the two habitats. And this, uh, one, this one county is a collapse, the, 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 two, uh, the, 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 the two, two, two genomes. And, uh, um, and so, then, I mean, again, we want to do, we want to separate the habitat. The, the, one of the key uh, problem is that the human heterozygosity is uh, about 0.1%. And uh, in the old days, the, the error rate of noise down sound rate five, 5 to 10%. Basically, you are looking for a very tiny of a signal out of a, a, a large amount of noises. It's very difficult to identify the, the heterozygosity. Like here, I'll show you the example. This is older nano for race. And this is a, 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 a genomic region. And uh, for people who are not familiar with the, the IGB, on the, this, uh, the, the top part, this gray, I mean, this gray area, this shows the, the real coverage. And the color bar shows the, I mean, the potential heterozygotes. And if you look, look at these color bars, some, some of them are 50 50, and this may, may be real heterozygotes. Some of them are, I mean, 10, 9, 10, 90%. It's such a lot difficult to, to, to say. This is the, the data. And, you, and the, the goal is to you can identify real heterozygotes from this region is hard. And how high is that green bar? How, what's the coverage? Uh, here is uh, 48. Is that typical for assembly? Yes. And um, I had the bottom, this is the same region, this high five refresh And so this region, you can see this, uh, all these colors and this, uh, the insertion and the deletion, you can see these all things and errors. And uh, for, for the high five rates, you can see the error rate much, much reduced. And also with the much reduced error, you can clearly see this, uh, again, you can see this uh, color bars in, in this gray area. This most of it is uh, around 50%. These are the real key levels. And if you compare this, to at the bottom to, to the top, you can see I'm a lot of this to the top are just four four six signals. And in practice, sometimes it's very difficult to to I mean to detect that. And the with the uh the, the, this is the, the bottom is the, the real show data. And the modern assembler up, up apply this procedure called the error correction, you correct the read to almost error free. This is I did the same region, the same the, the same race, I mean but uh, it's in a different and you can see on the top. This is the same as the, the hyper race. This is the hyper race. And on, uh, at the bottom, this is the, the cracker race. You can see there are 
initially there are, are I mean very few errors, and after the, the question, this there's none, no, no, no errors, and you can see the, the signal much clearer in the uh, in this. And with this near proper rates, and especially after the question, these multiple rates are actually error free, and you can disallow uh, exact matches. And 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 then you you can you will uh, get a new examining graph, and in this new new graph, the, the two the difference are separated, and the, the two the two copies are, are separated. And uh, uh, on the uh, bottom right, this, this is the examining graph, and this is called the Uric called the bubble. This is representing the difference between two hypertypes. And then this is called the locally phased examining graph. Basically, we have the uh, if we go go back to, to this, I mean we have the uh, two habitats that have the rays. We are controlling the assembly graph, and after doing the assembly, we will basically compress the ten rays into these four units. These four units uh, preserve the the here that's called the e e event. And the next step is from the locally faced uh, assembly graph. I mean this just shows um, uh, what the real data looks look like. It, it, on the left, the tower example. On the on the right, this is real data. data. This is a uh, two megabits region uh, in uh, in a human genome, and you can see this uh, long, very long bubbles. Each of them is a uh, hundred kilobits. Uh, this is basically result of this uh, 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 lo locally result of habitat. And then the next step is for me need to. This is just locally result of I mean resolving into five hundred kilobits blocks, and we want to connect them into the, the global facing. And uh, the one of the most reliable way to do that is to use the parental information. You see when the parents, not with long read, you can see when the parent with the short read, say 34 recovery short read, the DCL of cheap $200, you can get that. And uh, you just count, you use the parental specific cameras. By that, I mean, I mean some camera will only occur in father, but not in mother. Some camera and vice versa, some camera only occur in father, but not in, in mother. You can use, use these cameras to tag the, the, the sequence. And so in this figure, the, the, actually the red parts come from the, the mother and the blue part come from, uh, are tagged with, maternal, with the paternal cameras. And with this, you just trace the red parts, you, you get the maternal genome. You trace the blue parts, you get the, 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 maternal, the paternal genome. And this is basically this is the, the assembly is done. And uh, there's uh, also uh, uh, some practical issue with, with the, 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 this uh, procedure is sometimes don't have the parents. And we have some other solution. This we can use the high C to do the, the, the facing. I'm not going to detail, but with the high, high C, we can achieve similar uh, uh, accuracy. And so in this part, this uh, it, there's a for each column there are two bars, two, two lines, and each line will represent one habitat partition. And the red color indicating this is a very mother, this maternal genome, maternal. I mean sequence and the blue part indicating this this uh, paternal sequence. You can see, for example, they did chromosome one. It's a uh, the two assemblies fully re re resolved the paternal and the maternal copies across the whole, whole genome. And for other for, for all the others, it's fully re re resolved except the centromeres. Centromeres another beast. Um, okay, this is the the, the about is about what the current assembly is. Uh, is a more uh, baseline uh, assembly. And so in the following, I will show uh, what, what people typically do, I mean, what data, data are required to achieve this assembly, and what's the more complete pattern. As, I mean, when Rafa asked, I mean, this, the same 13 I said, they use multiple data, data and how the multiple data are used here. Uh, the current human genome, the GR38, is uh, over 20 years old. It still has hundreds of gaps. Over 100 uh, unplaced and localized counties, these small counties, uh, that's not, not on chromosomes. And centromere are simulated. This is the important point. This uh, human GR38 actually has centromere sequence, but none of these are real. They are, they are computers simulated based on camera profile. They use a human model to simulate it. These, these, these are not real. And I'll do a read, read mapping. This is called all the artifacts. And also, most telomeres are uh, missing. Telomeres are also sub telomeres are uh, missing. And uh, in the total, uh, Last year, this uh, semester 13, they called telomere to telomere genome, and uh, the term T2T is coined by this T2T consortium. And uh, the T2T, uh, T2T chromosome means a fully assembled without gaps from the from one telomere to the other telomere, including the centromere and, all, and all, all the, uh, other information. And also, I want to uh, emphasize that uh, if we, we want to claim T2T, this is not just we get counted and you visit the telomere. It's also equally important that you can validate that. As I said, the coverage is even, and uh, you, can, you should actually get the correct counting, not the baby the counting with this assembly. You can do some very aggressive things to merge gaps and so, so, so on. You can get a counting, but that, if it's wrong, that's not really T2T. 
a lot of paper have this AWM clarity to TI tree. Some of them are not, uh, haven't then go, gone through, I mean, very rigorous uh, uh, validation. And also for the data T2T chromosome and T2T assembly, when we talk about T2T assembly, uh, we actually don't really mean that uh, all the chromosomes are T2T. We mostly mean some or most uh, chromosomes are, are telomere to, to telomere. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, and uh, to some extent, actually even the 4713 is not really T2T. It still uh, has the, R, the rest of the DNA arrays. It's a, it's a, it's a, 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 a in a different way, but uh, as I said, it's ugly. It's a, that's a long story. Anyway, uh, the T2T assembly also implies that uh, uh, when we do the assembly, it's uh, for a different sample. The T2T means you have to re 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 resolve, fully re re resolve the two half of time. Otherwise, it's not, not, not T2T. If you mix them, it's not representing a natural uh, chromosome. That's not T2T. Uh, so why T2T? Here shows the example why the, the T2T is a uh, uh, matter. Here, this uh, this uh, GTF2IR D2 gene, this is uh, associated with this, uh, this Williams syndrome. This uh, important clinically important genes. But uh, on the bottom, at the bottom, you can see this uh, the, the read alignment, the high five read alignment, the 10 kb, the 15 kilobits long reads. But even with 15 kilobits long reads, you can't resolve this region. You, you can you, you will see gaps. And what ha happens? Yeah, but but uh, if if you do the assembly, if you do do the older assembly, this is not the rich trace assembly. I mean, you, you have some information here, but there's also a long long, long gap. Oh, I mean, on the other hand, and if you do the very high quality assembly using the high time high can know this uh, high quality assembler, you can see you can actually assemble through this region with uh, just one contact, and you can start to see the heterozygous difference here. And uh, what ha happens here is that there's a gene conversion. A very long gene conversion between this GTR uh, IRD2 and IRD2B. There's a there's a parallel gene, I mean downstream to 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 the to, to this gene. And the, the this region, the purple region, is copied from that. And when we do the the, the, the read map mapping, these reads because this, this uh, copied from that, the read these genes are very similar to each other, like 99% similar. And this read will be mapped to to this uh, to the other copy. If you look at the copy of this, this region actually has a had had higher co co copy, and so these reads they become zero copy, and you can't really re resolve it because they have a read. The part with the 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 assembly, now the the the, the assembly, uh, we the can can re re resolve this re region in long long time because it's observing the, the different. It's a um, well to the rest of my mapping. It's uh, actually you have third have have involved, and that's why the read can be mismapped. But when we do the assembly, it's, it is uh, actually it's, uh, looking at the, the, the individual sample. That's why it can, can re resolve this, this better. And uh, that's, uh, uh, this, this is just a, this one, this uh, uh, bit two homologous genes that is called by gene conversion, non-allelic gene conversion. And here is another example. This uh, second model duplication is actually, it's it worse. This is the, the C4 locus, this, uh, this class three MCC gene. There are two copies on the current reference genome, C4A and C4B, but some people may have one copy, some people may have three or even four co co copies of, of, of this gene. And in this sample, you can see the real depth in, in the middle is actually, is about that double. I mean, you can see there's something goes wrong, but you are not sure what's, what's really going wrong. But if you do the assembly, you can fully resolve that in the context. Uh, uh, the, the, the reason is that uh, here is a maternal copy has one actual C4B gene. I saw this coverage got, got uh, that about. And there are hundreds of genes like, like the C4. This is now just one example. And uh, these, uh, uh, these, these genes actually correlated with the, the gene uh, expression. And uh, on, on the right, this from the Bob Hacker paper. If you have higher co copies, you tend to have a high, higher expression of, of this gene. Those are people from the left. These, what, what are the... Yeah, these are people. And you can see that some mode have five copy and five copy. The other deep is sample one, so it's five could mean and two copy, three copy, or one copy, four copy. And this uh, this uh, from but they, they, at that time they can't re -re resolve the the half time. These days they, they can actually resolve it. Also, when when we can uh, how we can we re -re uh, achieve the the, the 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 data? This uh, uh, shows the. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the data we typically use, as I said, short rate, we still, we still use short rates to correct uh, homopolymer errors, and also the parental sequencing, we still use that. And then there's a long range short rates, the high C rates, I briefly mentioned that, this is useful to resolve the, the single cell sample. And the, the strength seek is a similar, is a, is a kind of similar technology.
may I have your attention, please? Adult medical response, Dana L2, nuclear medicine, calling. <laughs> Okay, and then there, there's a then not not the rates. I mean, I, I in the previous I mentioned a lot of about the, the accurate rates, but actually we still need uh use the the the, the ultra rate, especially the ultra long rate, not for ultra long rate these days. We use the, this is actually we have the the, the high rate, the high accuracy, and the ultra long rate is uh, actual long rate length, and these days we can combine them. I'd be, I mean, on, at, uh, in 2020, we can't really re combine the two data types. And these days, we combine the two data by that type. Basically, take out advantage of both accuracy and the, uh, uh, the, the real length. And then the, the, the high fi rates and also uh, the, the not for duplicate high rates. These are error rates is below 1.5%. These are actually more accurate than, than human rates these, these days. Uh, besides home polymer, home polymer short rates are, is better. But uh, I mean, outside the home polymer, they are more accurate than the short rates. And uh, uh, when we do the department, these, these are this uh, on the left shows the typical way we do the home zygote assembly. This is kind of system. Uh, uh, similar to what I said, what I what I discussed is just one part of the assets. And uh, when we do the home diagnosis assembly from the top, we have the 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 rate. We have uh, signal, although it's very accurate, that, that there's still a occasional a signal error. This uh, this ye yellow box is showing the the signal errors. And then we do the error correction. I believe I mentioned that we do face aware and uh, repeat uh, aware of uh, error correction. We get the sensory uh, error free rates. Uh, this, this, this rate we, we do the assembly using this, for example, in this case, I mean, you can use the overlap graph and there are other approaches to, to, to control the graph. But either way, we will control a, a, a graph. And in the initial graph, uh, due to the re re repeat, we may see some complex topology, usually we call these tangles. We may, we may see complex topologies around that. And we use ultra long rates to further re 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 resolve the tangles. And uh, the tangles, I mean, uh, if you look at closely, there's actually two possible ways to go through the, the, the tangles from, from this, uh, the, between the two proper parts. And uh, with the, the ultra long rates, you can, you can determine I mean, which part, which possibility is more, more, more likely using the ultra long rates. And then there may be remaining gaps. Then we use long range data like high C or strength seek to patch the, the, the remaining gap. That these will, these are actually not T2T, these will be big be gaps. But uh, um, uh, for a lot of uh, non human sample, that's still necessary. I mean, for, for the, the, the remaining things. And on the right, this shows what we do for the deployed, here that's about the deployed uh, uh, assembly. The procedure actually, they follow the, the same procedure, but some details are different. It's still, uh, here, the, the red and blue are basically coming from two hypertypes, and the purple are uh, coming from this uh, homozygous regions, long homozygous region, long, longer than, than the rates. And we still do the same, and maybe create the, the signal errors, and then uh, we construct the graph using uh, the previous algorithm. And uh, uh, previous, I also mentioned bubbles, and this graph will have bubbles, will have many bubbles. And some bubbles may have this tunnels, complex topology. Uh, some bubbles may, may, may be broken. And with the, the, the ultra long rates, we can fix a lot of the, the, these problems. And there will be a remaining part that can't be fixed. Uh, in, the, in this graph, you can see, I mean, you have this uh, very long bubbles, it's merging the, these two and patching the gap, I mean, resolving the, the, this, and you have a long, long bubble, but they're still facing, you don't know, really don't, don't know the phase between this very long bubble and this really small one, and let alone these uh, disconnected uh, uh, restrictions. And then we applied high C and other, I mean, the trio information, we can fully re re resolve, and we can know that the red part is face this, and the blue are faced together, and then we, we will add gaps to, to pair them. And then did, and at, at this point, we will fully face the, the two, 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 two genomes. This is what, what the current pipeline. And I mean, when we this data, when we say, especially for large genome, when we do see T2T or some large genome, if you see the T2T in the title and also the large genome, they all follow, follow the, 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 this pipeline. This is the, the current practice. And uh, uh, I was just to give it a, um, okay, maybe brief and my mention. Um, in the previous figure, this is the, the same as, as, as this figure. In, in this figure, there are different ways to, to resolve. Once you get the, the, the assembly graph, there are different ways to do the phase facing. Uh, but when you only have the, the high, high five rates, you, you can do you can generate different type of the, 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 the assembly. And when you have the, the high C rates, you can usually uh, fully uh, resolve. And then you can also apply the, the scaffolding to, to grow them into the, the chromosome. Uh, this is, uh, basically, these are now, uh, only these are really close to the T2T, and all the others are not really T2T, but uh, uh, 
the data just a uh, uh, a solution while you don't have the perfect data data. Okay, the QD uh uh I know it is close. Uh uh the data before the QD assembly, I mean just a summary for small G genomes, a few hundred megabits is actually you can just use high C. Uh, uh sorry, you can just use high high five for small genome, you can actually do do the assembly well because with high five just one type of data alone. But if a little bit long, longer, you high C is needed to get these guy votes. For larger deep genomes, this one to three gigabits. And um, say mammals, birds are in, in, in that range. If you want to get the top quality, then you should get the high five, ultra long, trio, three data types, three data types. And if, if you don't have the parents, you can add high C, but the high C is currently not as reliable as a trio. And uh, if you don't have the ultra long, you can get the high five uh, data and, and trio. This is this combination can get good enough assembly. This assembly actually will be better than, than just this array, just with, with high five data alone. It's, you can get a better assembly than the Jerry's date. And uh, if you, and in some cases, you can get uh, a decent assembly, but that, 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 that's definitely not T2T with high, high, high data alone. And the Chinese pandemic pay paper use uh, this, uh, there's a reason Chinese pandemic paper in nature use this uh, recipe. And the current human pandemic reference use this, this recipe. And they are in the, by the end of this year, we will produce uh, assembly with this the top quality one. And for, Poly poly and huge genomes, and still no, no satisfied factory solution yet. And in here, um, you can see all of them measure high five. If you want to do, do, do good assembly these days, high five. This, uh, I think, no, no, there's no, no question here. Also, where did the nanopore? Where is the nanopore? And so, nanopore is um, currently, with nanopore data alone, it's uh, very difficult to, to achieve the T2T for large genome. It's okay for small genome, but very, there's no, no, no tooling involved for, for that currently. But nanopore is rapidly uh, improving. This uh, new new data type, the uh, nanopore duplex, it may be as effective well as HiFi, and uh, in future, it's uh, uh, maybe may become a very important technology. But so far, it's uh, in early size stage, and it's not stable. And uh, I think if you want to get good data these days, you have HiFi. And this shows some, I mean, the data when you do, do the assembly, this is the assembly graph. Uh, you can see that most of them are resolved into chromosomes, and these are the, the RDNA array uh, character in this region. And we ignore number, based on all these uh, all these assembly are better than GRC, actually much better than, than GRC days. These days, I mean, if you just one CPU, I mean, no CPU day, just one, one, one day on, on, on a server, you can get assembly better than GRC days. That 20 years of effort going into that. So in summary, I mean, this, uh, we can get a two much better than just in the past uh, two or three years. And the phase assembly is, uh, is a routine. And these days, both uh, the high five and, and work workflow, these two assemblers, we can achieve much better assemblies. And I want to thank my, my group and also the very consortium for, for this work. Thank you. Mike. So, thanks for the amazing talk and work. Um, so visualization is obviously really helpful for seeing what's going on, mm -hmm. looking across patients. And like even in your talk, we're still looking at IGV of a reference genome. What are your thoughts on visualization of you know multiple patients and avoiding this like projection of into the reference genome? Uh, so far, quite a few people think about that, and it's very people in the human panel consortium. But uh, we don't have a satisfactory solution yet because uh, I mean, currently we are thinking um, the USIC people, the, the, the USIC people, and with the USIC browser people, they are thinking. Um, I mean, this called some tool map. I mean, to show the the, but this is still mostly the uh, the alignment, the basically the assembly showing the relationship between the assembly. But now we really sure they shall read the map to a pendulum. So far, we are, I think we are still quite far from that. And uh, this is open question in the field. Tim? Just sort of related to that, um, Eric Garrison was showing off uh, IVG as opposed to IGV with the most recent hand genome conference. The sequence tube maps are seem to be practical for small loci and small bubbles and small tangles. But is there anything on the horizon to? Uh, and people have tried Hilbert curves in the past for gypsy data, all sorts of weird ideas to try and compress 
large, bulky, bulky things into, a, into something where we can recognize patterns in it. Is there anything like that? The foot per pangenome uh, graph alignments or the coverage of pangenome graphs? Um, currently, no. It's uh, I think that I, re I require it's a, there are different methodologies. I require it, 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 one of them. It's a uh, um, I think it's a uh, usually this technology is uh, basically is bad for certain scale, but if the tools. I mean, if you zoom in the too small scale, we don't have good methods. If you use too large scale, you also don't, don't have good methods. Um, I said that this is kind of an open area. And some of you may notice that I have this, uh, this pangene tool. This is actually also at a different scale, basically looking at how the genes are organized uh, in the gym. This is a bit larger scale, but not the, at the quantum scale. And I think there's a, we will need quite a lot of efforts, I mean, how to uh, visualize the this uh, data and also and as Mike said, I mean one is uh, you have panel reference, the graph reference, how to combine the reference with the short rate. That's another big big, big problem. Maybe so far we don't know the answer yet. Uh, thanks for the interesting informative talk. Um, I was curious to hear your thoughts on really complex genomes that maybe have like a lot of aneuploidy like cancer. Mm. Are we to the point now where we should just be doing long read sequencing on those and maybe assembly to try to understand all the structural variation or, or are we not quite right there yet? Um, the assembler we have tried, tried uh, we have tried on K5 CD2 and uh, it's actually it's not fully re re resolving the, 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 the genome. But uh, you can, if the assembler just out of box, you can recover rec almost all the germline genomes and also phase fa it. And also it can capture most of the, the breakpoints. And so it's uh, adding useful information, but it's still a long way, a very long way from the, the T2T. Right here. Uh, I was struck by that slide you showed of the, um, the, the number of copies and the expression level uh, mm -hmm. coming up. Um, I wonder in general what, um, what implications do you think these new these new assemblies have for things like RNA seq analysis and other, other analyses that rely on the reference? Chip seq. Yeah. Yeah, people have already showed. Uh, I think there have been papers to show that uh, this actually there are new peaks. If you align really to to the the, the seven thirteen, there are actually new new new, new peaks in the gene you know. You can see the chip seq, and for the gene copies, there's a. It's uh, the current the, the, the gene annotation is also is built on top of the JS8. It's actually incomplete. There's a, there are genes that are not on. Um, it's mostly the structurally the different genes. For them, there are actual actual exons and fewer exons and a very that word like the HRA that are different from them. And I think the human this pendulum will help basically they can confirm the gene structure and actually help the uh, the basic new very different alleles, new 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 isoform and help the RNA data. Mm -hmm. Just following on from that, does that mean for like TCR and BCR sequencing that we should not be using 38 and we should be using the T to T assembly? Um, it's actually this, uh, the, the, the GR38 and the, the TFT, they have the very different uh, organizations. The, 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 the genome are different, but both of them are actually complete. And there's a, actually, there's a definitely actual work basically to find the, the genomic Difference uh, be between between the, the I say the, the TCR these BPs are I think this uh, I think I have seen preprint on, on that, but I don't know know, know the details. But I think there's the, the, the need ongoing work to uh, understand the difference. I have a related question. So when you say T to T, it's one individual. Yeah. So <laughs> so let's say I want to load the genome into my bioconductor analysis. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that mean now? So, so it's question one, like what should we be? So there's a function in bioconductor lets you load the genome. It's really great and it's mm -hmm. fast and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it takes very little memory, but now that's gonna change. It's gonna mean something else. And I guess one thing I, that you could be giving is the reference genome being some kind of most, like, <coughs> like a summary or an average of humans. Mm -hmm. And then some other database like HapMap used to be that tells you where the main differences are that we should be careful about. Because that, that, that must have changed now. It used to be like, here's a genome, here are the SNPs. Mm -hmm. Now there's, I mean, you've shown us a bunch of other things that could be happening. So I want to hear your thoughts on all this. Um, firstly, it's uh, on the multiple representation. Here is, um, um, uh, actually, my collaborator have have the, this tool, the diagnosis, the, the compression tool. Basically, you have multiple genomes you can compare that. Uh, the current human pandemic, there's uh, about 90 uh, chromosomes, 
um, that that's uh, ninety chromosome that are two uh, about three hundred gig, and uh, they can compare it down to one point five gig for uh, uh, whole genome. But basically, I think it would be good to have some I R API to basically you can re 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 retrieve this genome quickly from that archive, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, for second question, this uh, uh, the, this the, so far I think we still most people still focus on on, on the on this the, the same uh, new type uh, difference the the uh, the SNPs. But uh, um, um, I think in for the for large bulk countless things, I think usually people describe it with the graph because this have doesn't work in, in that space. Uh, but uh, the Current problem is that different graphs have different styles. I mean, I'm not going into details, but basically, in the human pendulum paper, there are two graphs. I've stated even the two graphs have different styles. And uh, so far, there's not a consensus how to represent, in, how to re 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 represent this. And uh, uh, we hope this to be improved in the next release of the, the human pendulum. Basically, they try to basically take the advantage of both and basically generate one, one, one version. And uh, basically, make this as a lot. Currently, it's all still there are too many moving pieces. I think right. it's maybe it's not the right time to go into that basically to have a fixed representation. All right, well, let's stop here and then you can keep asking him later. Thanks again. Um... Okay.